The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily represent those of this station or its management. It's time now for Where You Live with Gene Sullivan, the show that deals with the news and events that affect you the most. Whether you rent or own, live in an HOA, single-family home, or an apartment building, Gene will tackle the issues right where you live. So, from the True North Painting Studios, here is the original man of steel, Resolve himself, who stands for truth, justice, and the association way. Here's Gene Sullivan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Where You Live. I'm Gene Sullivan, and I'm broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. When you're looking for that right painting contractor, what do you look for? Isn't it someone who will respect you, your time, your property, and your budget? That's what you can expect from True North Painting. Find out more about this exceptional company by going online at truenorthpainting.com. That's trunorthpainting.com, or give them a call at 952-831-1433. I'm also brought to you by the great folks at Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. Excuse me. I also want to give a shout out and a big hello to uh, Christopher Wider Puberty. How are you, Chris? I'm good, Gene. How are you? I'm doing doing really good. Good. Uh, Let me uh, ask you uh, uh, a question. Uh, What is it that makes uh, people unhappy? Uh, some go-tos would be, uh, finances, family, uh, politics. Okay. Uh, Those are all specifics, but can mm-hmm. you, can you whittle it down to just one sort of overriding theme? What is it that makes people unhappy versus happy? Have you thought about that? Uh, that's a good question. I guess I would go, uh, to me, it's a personal, not choice, but you can kind of make your own happiness a little bit. Um, <clears throat> you can kind of call your own shots. And okay, would would you say that it would be uh, fair to say that uh, people that are unhappy basically are people who have uh, unrealized expectations? Ah, uh, yeah, a sense of failure, yeah, regret, yeah, yeah. You know, because in the in the example of a re- relationship, if you have an expectation of someone. Uh, that loves you very much, and and uh, they love you back, uh, uh, you know, uh, an awful lot. Uh, there are those expect those are, there are those expectations and, mm-hmm. and intimacy that uh, makes for happiness. Yeah. When a person, when the relationship becomes unhappy, there is probably an unrealized expectation. Somebody's falling short of something. Yeah. Or it's unrealistic. Yeah. And the reason I, I bring that up is that. Uh, a little over a week ago in the Star Tribune, there was a person who wrote an article, and I don't think I'm far off in misrepresenting her intent in writing this article at all. Uh, she's talking about living in homeowner associations. She refers to it as the good, the bad, and the puzzling. And uh, she understands there's some good, but she realizes that there's a lot of bad, and she's very puzzled. And what she's puzzled about is that with homeowner associations, they have grown exponentially over the last 40 years. Uh, oh, I guess it's over 20 times over. And uh, she can't understand why, because there are a lot of disappointments that people have living in homeowner associations. And she's asking, why are people living there? Well, we've got a response for her. Uh, today on the show, and, and we'll deal with that in just a little bit. But our first story is the stuff of property management in the news. Property management in the news is brought to you by Home Furniture and Abbey Floor Coverings. Their showrooms are staffed with professionals who will help you choose what you need to fit both your lifestyle and budget. Whatever you need, chances are they'll have what you're looking for. Now, if you wish to avail yourself of special pricing you're not going to find anywhere else, all Where You Live listeners can call Customer Service Coordinator Lori Matson at 952-224-2663. Our first story comes from the Sacramento Bee. 
uh, just about uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, there are two legislators who have uh, some bills that are up, and uh, it's on a battle over property rights. Uh, Here is uh, what's uh, happening. Uh, There are two legislators. Uh, There is someone in uh, the House. Uh, I think that person's uh, name is uh, Tom Amanio. And then in the Senate, uh, a gentleman by the name of Mark Leno. And they have a bill that if this passes, it would uh, stop and prevent landlords who want to sell their property for the purpose of allowing someone else to convert it into condominiums and stop that process because they want to keep all the units that are rentals right now as rentals, and they say that shouldn't change. That uh, just because you own the property doesn't mean that you have the right to be able to change and do something different with it. And uh, this is uh, very significant in a number of ways. Uh, For example, uh, first of all, I think it's important to note that in California, over the last, oh, several decades, California has become very strict in uh, the laws that they have in place dealing with landlords and renters. Uh, It uh, would be, I guess it would be fair to say that it is very much a renter-friendly place concerning laws. Uh, For example, they have rent control. And uh, rent control is where uh, they say it's, you know, really just wrong for a landlord to be able to expect to raise uh, rents along the way and whatever you came into renting a place from the very beginning, uh, you ought to have the expectation that it stays that way as long as you stay there. And so what's happened is you've had people who have uh, stayed uh, year after year after year. And uh, even though the landlord's costs continue to rise with property taxes, uh, the cost of, oh, let's say it's a, an apartment building, and uh, usually water, of course, and utilities, and some utilities are paid uh, for uh, in that rent, uh, even though the gas may go up and the heating costs, water costs may go up, costs to have uh, vendors make repairs to the roof, uh, do uh, the lawn care, all of that. That all continues to go up, but the amount of money that the landlord is able to take in is Uh, very predictable and stays the same. And so what's happened is there have been a lot of people who have uh, ended up getting to a point where they've said, you know what, Uh, I went from a place of uh, making money to not making so much money. And then for a number of landlords now, and a couple decades later, they're saying, I'm not making any money at all. I might be breaking even, or I may not even be breaking even And I am uh, just trying to hold on. And I guess the hope for the landlord would only be with rent control is that someone would actually move on because when someone moves on, then you can charge rent. Uh, But what some of the state legislators don't understand with this whole idea of rent control is that because everyone else stays the same, what you need to do now in order to get someone else to come in is not just a little bit more than what everybody else is. You have to try and get everything else that you need from these one or two people that are moving. And so the rents for newer people coming in are just skyrocketing. And and legislators are still scratching their heads saying, why is it uh, that uh, there isn't anything called affordable housing anymore? (laughs) And they think that what they need to do is to... uh, impose more laws, and that's what they're trying to do right now. And the only other thing they can do, they've already controlled the rent. They are saying, oh, look, uh, landlord, I, you know, it doesn't matter if you want to uh, redevelop the property yourself. You need to sell the property. Someone else will purchase it, and if they choose to redevelop the land, redevelop that property, they can. And there is uh, what's called the Ellis Act, which has been in place for a couple of decades now, where the legislature said, 
in this particular case, even though we have rent control, if the person sells their property and they're saying, I want to be out of the landlord business and I'm selling to someone and it's their purpose and their desire to redevelop the property now into converting it into condos because they'll be able to make more money than uh, what they're able to get as a, a rental property. Then they have the ability to evict the person out of the property. And that is about the only loophole that they've had. Well, what are those ramifications? What else uh, is uh, going to happen through all of this? Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit further, but we need to take a break right now, so we'll do that. Don't go away. A lot more of Where You Live with me, Gene Sullivan, after these messages. 